Hey guys, I'm back. I'm just going to actually um, just share a little bit of information that I've learned over the years about divination and about um, channeling messages through other ways besides cards because I just started doing tarot itself, but I've always just like, you know, in a sense known things and then those things just turn out to be true. So one thing that I wanted to um, get into was the fact that um, there are multiple ways of divination besides just using the cards. And before I felt confident enough to even use tarot cards, I was divining using um, music, like shuffling my playlist and asking for a message through music. Um, well, if you just have all trap music, I don't, I don't know what kind of message you're gonna get. But if you have like a variety of music or like just pick a random playlist and, you know, shuffle through and ask, you know, a question, ask for a lyrical answer to the question. That's another way you can divine without um, using cards. Cause like I said, um, I just started to study tarot and learn about tarot cards, what, maybe two years ago? Like really, really studying and really um, understanding the meanings behind them and everything. So with that being said, um, I used different ways of interpreting and getting answers without even realizing it. So the thing is like we are such spiritual people and spiritual beings that we don't even realize how spiritual we are sometimes. So um, one thing that I always used to do was um, do that. And I will, you can also like, um, if you're outside in nature, and you know you're meditating, you're letting your mind flow free and you're letting everything um, just come through. As you're thinking, you know, you can say certain things like, um, uh, like hearing bird sounds or hearing nature sounds or things like that. You can ask for confirmation through sounds of nature, through literally the wind blowing and uh, different things like that. So it's not necessarily that you have to get um, confirmation with cards because there are so many different ways to confirm messages for yourself and for, um, you know, for your life. Because I know that a lot of people think that because someone reads tarot that they personally have their best interests at heart, but that's unfortunately not always the case. And with spirituality becoming popular and being like trendy now it's not really um something that is cared after in the ways that a lot of people should treat it so when you get divination or um get a tarot reading from someone whether it be um through youtube through personal one-on-one -on -one, even through um you know these apps that we have um one thing that you have to understand is when the connection is open it's literally like a tether so it is a line that that directly leads your mind to their mind their spirit guides to your guides and vice versa so one problem that i have noticed is that some tarot readers will actually keep those lines open create problems for someone so that they, that person can then come back to them to get the solution. And that's like a ongoing cycle of like, um, you know, sending negative energy someone's way so they come running back to you to, to solve the problem. It keeps their, prop, their pockets full, which is, you know, fucked up, but it does happen. And, um, you know, I remember this dream that I had very, very vividly, very vividly, that um, this tarot reader, someone that um, I was actually introduced to, uh, she actually was in my dream with a girl that uh, I associated with. She wasn't really a friend, but I associated with her. Um, and, you know, we were all sitting and talking and she kept, in my dream, she kept, uh, you know, speaking to me and telling me things but she kept getting it wrong so i'm like no that's not right that's not right and then she you know had like a nervous face in my dream and i noticed that every time 
she would look over at the other girl that was in my dream, the, the girl that I knew, she just kept doing this. And then like you literally, like in my dream, I literally felt that depressing, like sad energy. I felt every bit of it and it wasn't even being directed at me. She just kept looking at her and doing this to her. So I'm like, whoa, I woke up in my dream from my dream and, um, you know, I didn't tell the girl about that part of my dream. I just told her like, oh, you popped up in my dream, da 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 da. But the other girl, the one that she was throwing the negative energy at, um, that she was also doing readings for and everything like that, I told her, I was like, um, you know, you were in my dream as well, but I didn't understand the, uh, the message that was being said to me until I further investigated, uh, you know, dream walking and things like that. So once I got a clear picture of everything that was going on, and at that time, the girl who was in my dream was experiencing bad vibes, bad vibrations and negative energy. She just, it's like she just couldn't get it off of her. And guess who she was running to for help? The girl that was in my dreams going like this to her. So it's, it's one of those things that unfortunately, because spirituality is such a big thing and because you know everybody's you know everybody's open to well not everybody's open to spirituality but everybody's open to the idea that people who are spiritual are good people just because you know the way they divine and everything like that and you know messages and things like that things of that nature so unfortunately everybody is not having your best interests at heart. Not everybody who is a tarot reader is trying to necessarily help benefit you. Sometimes they will actually cause problems in your life so that you come running back to them over and over and over and over again. And they, that keeps their pockets full. They drain your energy, all types of stuff, okay? So one thing that I wanna highly advise you is, you know, if you do get a tarot reading from someone, say it out loud, I remove this connection from this person I, and I, and then thank your guides for um, allowing a message to come through through that source. So once you um, speak to your ancestors, speak to your guides and everything, and you ask them to close that line of communication, it helps better protect you in the long run. If you do encounter somebody who is like that, who is in that dark space and who just wants to um, siphon energy off of you. So one thing that I really want to tell you guys and really want to express is that you have to not only protect yourself in the physical realm, but in the astral realm as well. Because I've actually had people try to attack me in my dreams and they woke up on the other side, okay? So um, one thing that you really have to take in account is that in, your, in the astral state, okay, it's a conscious state, but it is as close as we can get to the spirit realm without leaving the physical realm, if you understand what I'm saying. So if someone is divining for you, they already have that line of communication, like I said, they have that line that's connecting you together. So with that line being open and active, they can then dream walk their way to your consciousness, not only steal your energy, your ideas and things like that, but they can cause chaos in your mind as well. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is, you know, sometimes seeing people in your dreams is not a good thing, <laughs> okay? Depending on who it is, is not a good thing. So um, when you are able to really uh, experience somebody's energy to the fullest extent, um, then, you can then uh, start to get better clarity on if they were detrimental or not. So for one, for one instance, okay, if you are experiencing uh, like a lack of energy, low energy, low vibration throughout your day, and you just don't know why, 
and you know you you got readings from this person this person this person this person um what someone can do if they are advanced enough they can actually pull your energy from your dream state you don't have to be awake it actually makes it even easier if you are unconscious for someone to then siphon off of you and one thing that you don't really have control of if you're not really aware of everything that's going on is that um you know incubi and also succubi are just waiting and ready to continue to take from you so that's why um i tell people to be aware of like sexual dreams and stuff because sometimes they are setups for uh our energy to be taken from us as well so when you are in the astral state and you are noticing reoccurring things reoccur reoccurring people one thing you can do instead of like posting in a group asking what this means that means is just sit with yourself and sit with your guides and ask your ancestors and ask your guides specifically what something meant in your dream specifically ask them okay i saw this in my dream what message were you really trying to give me because when you ask other people it leaves everything open if you understand so that's why I try, you know, I love giving people readings. I love doing it, but I try to stress the point of um, our abilities. Like we are very, we are more advanced than we give ourselves credit for. And when you seek outside of yourself, it allows people who are praying ready and ready and willing to take your energy to just come in and they will continue to siphon and continue to take and take and take so this is why i always encourage people to think for themselves you know what i'm saying like don't ask someone else what a wax reading means in your um like in, in a group or anything like that uh just because your message was meant for you. So when you look at that wax after your candle burns down, you just sit and you just wait for wait for the words to come to your head and that's what the message is. That's what it is. Because when you listen to other people's messages outside of yourself, one, they can be uh, lying to you, you know, or two, they can't, um, your ancestors or your guides will actually block them from telling you what it means and give them a whole different meaning. And if you just take that information in and don't sit with yourself, now you're taking on their version of what your candle means. So you see what I'm saying? Like you take on that energy that they gave you instead of sitting with yourself and sitting with your energy and taking on that specific energy. So one thing that I want to really stress to you guys is protecting your dreams in the astral state. So in the astral realm, it is one of the things that, like I said, is it is the closest form to the spirit realm besides, you know, death. So we are very uh, spiritually active in our dreams. One thing you can do to uh, practice strengthening your abilities in the astral realm is, you know, on, on top of reading books and everything like that, but you can actually play um, lucid dream music. You can play um, like, uh, what's it called? Akashic Records. Uh, music and stuff like that just to open your your mind up keep yourself activated and better um better get a clear picture of any messages that you may have missed throughout the day or throughout the week or anything like that and it also uh opens a line up to continuing to to connect with your guys and continuing to connect to connect with your spirit sorry my tongue is tied today so when you are in the astral realm, you have to also ask for protection as well. And if you have children, you should ask for their protection as well. So when they are traveling, you know, they, they, are, they are traveling with you. They're not just off into la la land, okay? <laughs> and you will actually understand um, yourself better as well. 
because when you remember images from your dreams and things like that and you take those messages in and then you ask your ancestors your spirit guides whoever you are connected to what what exactly it means then that better helps you gauge um, not only like things that you are fearful of things that you have to work on or things that are coming in the future for you so when you have these dreams you can go on like websites and just pick a, web, a website that resonates the most with you and try to remember bits and pieces of your dream try to remember the sequence it was in and then get your messages that way as well so with um with divination like i said um when you are divining and or when you are getting divination from someone else it leaves that line of connection open so like i said before when you get a reading from someone you have to thank your guides for allowing the message to come through and close that line of communication right then and there because like i said you know every not everybody um portrays themselves as uh you know, some people play possum to try and downplay their abilities and stuff like that. And they don't um, necessarily share everything that they know how to do. So if someone who is a succubus or things of that nature, um, they actually benefit the most from taking your dreams away and taking your energy that way and especially through sexual dreams and stuff like that because um you are in an unconscious state and you are literally at your highest form of self in your sleep so it's much easier to take your energy in your sleep than it is to do like a direct one-on-one -on -one, um session or things like that so one thing I really want to sh share with you guys with divination is it can be as simple as asking for the wind to blow when uh, when you have the right idea or the right answer to your question. You know what I'm saying? Like you can use nature is everywhere. OK, so using nature is probably the best way to divine. And if you are just, like I said before, just like sitting in nature and you have a question or you need answers to a question, ask the wind to blow when, when you are on the correct path, a uh, thought path in your mind. Because our minds are so active throughout the day and they are, um, they are sort of too loud to hear the messages sometimes. So sometimes we need like to hear uh, a bird song or something like that or the wind blow things like that things of that nature just to give us verification and like i said i use i use music to divine as well i just i just shuffle hit shuffle and just wait for a song to play and if you know if, if it's a ratchet song it's a ratchet song and they just want me to get a little ratchet okay <laughs> but you know you can use different things to divine it does not have to be tarot cards it does not even have to be um uh, oracle cards or anything like that it can be as simple as sitting with yourself sitting with yourself asking questions and just waiting for the the answer to come to you and it can be through you know people walking across you know walking down the street and saying something and you're like oh that was it you know it's like things like that that is divination divination is so broad and so open and it's something that we give away too easily to other people and i will say that and i am a tarot reader myself okay and i honestly feel like when we start to learn how to sit with ourselves and we start to explore our own mind and our own talents especially um through divination through things like that we start to strengthen our connection with spirit and when we strengthen our connection with spirit baby we are limitless okay so I'm just going to leave you guys with that. I just wanted to just share with you some warnings of letting everybody read you. Because like I said, that line of communi communication is open and they can just come and steal everything. You know, steal your whole mind, literally suck you dry. And you just, just you don't want that. Okay. So I'm, I'm leaving this here. I hope you guys have a great night because I sure will. And I will see you guys another night.